Why do we love Saturn so much? Right, because we love its amazing rings. The planet stands out in the solar system because of them. The major rings have a diameter of 170,000 miles, yet their thickness does not exceed 330 feet. Saturn's slowest outermost ring spins at about 37,000 miles per hour. It's slower than the rotation of Saturn itself. But did you know that Saturn was ringless for most of its history? Let's find out how they were formed. Using Cassini's final plunge into the planet, researchers could estimate the ring's mass, 33 billion billion pounds. Further, they have determined that the rings were between 10 to 100 million years old, much younger than the planet itself. The thing is that the rings only look solid. They are made of billions of rock and ice chunks. They are primarily tiny ones, looking like grains of sugar to those as large as a house or even as mountains. The innermost chunks of ice and rock shoot through space at about 52,000 miles per hour. There are mysterious spokes in its rings. It seems they form and disperse within a couple of hours. And these spokes might consist of electrically charged sheets of tiny particles formed when small meteors hit the rings, or maybe electron beams from Saturn's lightning. One theory says Saturn's rings have formed all that extra material that remained after Saturn began, which is a material that couldn't create a moon. There's also a theory that says there was Theia, a Mars-sized planet that collided with Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. Lighter crust parts ended up in space during the impact, whereas its denser core stayed behind. But in the case of Saturn, all that debris perhaps didn't put a new moon together, but it formed rings many people today recognize this planet for. Another theory is that rings formed from dust and debris of a moon that ended up destroyed by this big impact, maybe by an asteroid or comet. Or perhaps the rings are there because once a moon fell apart because of the tidal forces coming from its parent planet itself. If these rings formed at the same period as Saturn did, they would have had more than 4 billion years to collect a bit of debris and dirt coming from micrometeorite collisions. But these rings mainly consist of water ice, no dirt at all, which means they're younger than expected. And the nature of this ring system tells us a thing or two about Saturn's fuzzy inside. Fuzzy means its core is like sludge. The helium and hydrogen in Saturn mix with more and more rock and ice over time, the closer you go to the planet's core. It's similar to what you see in our oceans. The deeper you go, the level of saltiness increases. But the rings may disappear in the far future. Rings are generally more common than we think. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have their own ring system. But not every planet has the same ones. Saturn has a fascinating halo, and definitely the most spectacular rings, true. Others mostly have rings made of dust and rocky particles, and not just planets. Other space bodies can have rings, like the asteroid called Chiricla. But even though the gas giants of our solar system have rings, rocky, or so-called terrestrial ones, don't. And one theory says it might have been that way because gas planets in the outer area of the solar system protected those rocky ones that formed in the inner solar system from all those collisions that possibly could have formed rings around them. Or it could be because gas giants are way bigger and their enormous volume allows them to have a ring system that can remain stable. And what if Earth had rings in the past too? Maybe in the time of the big collision when our moon could have been formed. Now to some more cool things happening in our solar system. Pluto, a tiny dwarf planet at the edge of our solar system. Also the one we used to call a planet has a pretty bizarre atmosphere. No one expected to see a haze there go as high as 1,000 miles. That means it rises higher above the surface of the atmosphere of our home planet. And the atmosphere on Pluto has around 20 layers. They're more compact and way cooler than scientists expected. And tons of nitrogen gas escape Pluto by the hour. But the dwarf planet still finds a way to constantly create new supplies of all the nitrogen it had lost. One theory says it probably produces these supplies through geological activity. Our moon is pretty peaceful, but that's not something we can say for Io, one of Jupiter's moons. 
This one has hundreds of volcanoes. It's the moon with the most volcanic activity in our solar system. EO sends plumes of sulfur up to an incredible 190 miles into its atmosphere. Its volcanoes emit many particles and gases into the space right next to Jupiter every single second. Its eruptive activities happen because of Jupiter's mighty gravitational forces and magnetic field. The insides of EO tense up and relax all the time, depending on how close or far away it is from Jupiter. And that's why it generates enough energy to have such an eruptive nature. Speaking of volcanoes, Mars has one larger than the whole state of Hawaii. At first, you'd probably say it's a quiet and peaceful planet. But once upon a time, enormous volcanoes dominated its surface. Yup, that includes a well-known Olympus Mons, the largest volcano ever found in our entire solar system, 374 miles across, comparable to the size of Arizona. Olympus Mons is 16 miles high, three times the height of our tallest mountain, Mount Everest. And by its volume, this volcano is 100 times bigger than the largest one on Earth. Mars can have such big volcanoes because its gravity is significantly weaker than the one on our home planet. Also, the crust on Earth moves all the time, unlike the Martian crust. Do you know how the Hawaiian Islands formed? A hot spot in the mantle created a chain of volcanoes in the crust floating above it. A Martian volcano may grow bigger because its surface isn't moving, so a volcano could build up for a longer time in just one spot. Miranda is one of the most bizarre moons in the outer part of our solar system. It's a shadowy moon that orbits Uranus, with many craters, sharp ridges, and similar disruptions on its surface. Usually, this type of relief tells a certain area used to have a lot of volcanic activities. But that wasn't the case with Miranda. Also, this moon is way too small to generate tectonic activities. Another element that could form this type of surface. One theory says the gravitational force from Uranus could have caused the push-pull action, something that made all these bumps on Miranda's surface. We'll have to send another spacecraft to find out what was happening there. We are all made of stardust. 97% of atoms we're made of are the same as the material our galaxy consists of. The building blocks of life is a term we use for a group of elements that are vital for life on Earth. And stars have these elements too, but in different proportions. For instance, we are 65% oxygen by our mass, whereas elements we measure in space, like the spectra of stars, have less than 1% of oxygen. So Mercury is already the smallest in our solar system in the planet category, excluding some other bodies like the dwarf planet Pluto. And now it looks like it's still shrinking. It's the second densest after our planet, but it's getting denser over time. Researchers thought the Earth was the only planet in our solar system with tectonic activities for a long time. And now we know Mercury is tectonically active too. Messenger spacecraft managed to map the whole planet. Scientists realize the planet is full of fault scarps, some cliff-like landforms. Since these are relatively small, they're probably young. And Mercury is still contracting even 4.5 billion years after our solar system was formed. You're relaxing in your room and streaming some good tunes when suddenly the network's down. You try rebooting your phone, but there's still no connection. Out of nowhere, your sister barges into your room in panic. She's screaming something about rings. Boxing rings? Wedding rings? Rings on the tub? She's not making any sense. So she drags you out of the house and shows you the sky. You take a look up and see streaks of objects forming miles above the Earth's surface. Her connection seems to work. The two of you check online what's going on, and everywhere the same thing is making headlines. Rings are suddenly appearing in our sky. Hashtag Earth Rings is breaking the record, and videos are going super viral. Your sister can't help but join the crowd and takes a bunch of selfies with the sky. You run to the TV in your living room to check out the news. Scientists are warning about a coming catastrophe and explaining that everyone should remain indoors. Even though it's a cloudless day in the middle of summer, the weather seems to be getting colder and colder. Suddenly, the signal's cut off. Other channels show nothing either. Then you see your neighbors packing their bags and heading out. Others follow suit. You hesitate a bit, but decide to do the same in the end. 
your sister is still outside taking selfies when you urge her to come along with you to seek some answers. The two of you hop in your car and drive out into the city. The rings above seem to be gaining more mass with each second. You and your sister are getting colder and colder. You head to the university to see if anyone knows anything, but there's no one there. Only one parked car in the lot. And it's a good thing you recognize that car. You and your sister rush in and find the astronomy professor doing some quick calculations and trying to figure out why all this is happening. He urges you to take seats and begins explaining. No one knows what this is all about, but it's limiting the sun's exposure on Earth. Which explains why it's getting colder by the minute. Why the rings are getting thicker is a mystery, too. On Saturn, the rings are made up of ice and rock particles. They can be as small as an ant or the size of a bus. The rocks could be left over meteor debris or even remnants of dwarf planets. But since Earth is so close to the Sun, ice wouldn't be something you'd find floating above us. With all these rocks piled up, they block the Earth's access to Sun to warm us up and give us light. The professor goes on to explain that Earth will enter a new ice age, and oxygen levels will deplete within a year's time unless those newborn rings disappear anytime soon. This also explains why there's no connection. The rocks that form the rings are hitting and breaking the satellites. Suddenly, you hear a loud ringing noise outside. The three of you head outside and see a helicopter blasting an alarm with a red light flashing. Everyone to your homes now! This is not a drill! Everyone, head home! You get in your car with your sister, but the roads are jammed. You have to go on foot, which will take two hours. There's no way anyone can remain outdoors. You venture out seeing everyone stuck on the road. They're all arguing with each other and causing chaos. You try not to get caught in the middle of anything and sneak your way to the highway. With the rings getting thicker, less sunlight is breaking through. This Ice Age info is stuck in your head, chilling you even more. You take a deep breath and see a thin mist coming out of your mouth. The sky is getting darker and you're still not home yet. Your sister is tired and needs to rest, but you urge her to move on. You find an abandoned clothes shop and head inside. The store clerks are actually giving away thick jackets for everyone to wear. You grab a couple and slip them on. Only one more hour to get home, but the sky is completely dark. There's no way you and your sister can go out in such conditions. So you decide to camp up in the clothes shop. They set up a mini bonfire in the middle of the shop and create makeshift sleeping bags with the rest of the unused clothes. Luckily, there's enough food to feed everyone, including you and your sister. It's the middle of the night. The fire goes out, and you can't see outside the shop. You head to the window and open it up. A huge pile of snow spills in and wakes everyone up. It's the middle of August, and a snowstorm formed overnight. Everyone is freezing, and they start the fire anew. There's no radio or any way to find out what's happening. The wind picks up and starts shaking the shop. Things start falling off the shelves, but you and everyone else are cozy by the fire. The next day, You look outside and see the entire area covered in snow. You live in a sunny place where it barely rains, and the rings in the outer atmosphere are even bigger than last night. Out of nowhere, a truck filled with people pulls over, and the driver tells you there's a shelter for everyone some miles away. The truck has chains all over the tires and is equipped for the worst snowy conditions. Even though it's morning, the sky is pretty dark. You and everyone else hop in. Abandoned cars, some with their doors still open, are scattered all over. The truck drives around them or just smashes through the ones in the way. It pulls over next to an ambulance and takes all the equipment to help the ones in need. You drive past your neighborhood and see your entire house covered in snow. The large tree in your backyard has fallen under the weight of the snow and broken the roof, allowing snow to flood in. The truck speeds through and gets to the shelter, which, to your surprise, is the mall. You get out and see many of the townspeople being led to various stores that have now turned into dorms and health units. You're left in a sports store with a bunch of other people. Your sister has also been able to bunk with you. And to your luck, you see the professor helping out some people. But shortly after that, a loud explosion blasts through the mall and shatters glass screens. Everyone ducks for cover. You see people running outside. You head out and see a large metallic object lying in front of the mall entrance. 
There are people crowding the entire area, so it's not easy to see what all the fuss is about. But after getting a closer look, you find out it's a satellite fallen from orbit. It crashed in the front yard and made the boom. There were also reports of other satellites crashing on Earth in the most random places. That means all communication has been wiped out of the map. You run back inside the mall to await what happens next. You look at your sister in fear, not knowing that the new Ice Age has just begun. One year later, you're relaxing in your bunker when your sister barges in, freaking out. The rings are still there, but it's something else now. You run outside and see everyone gathering around and looking at the sky. Within a year, temperatures have dropped to freeze the entirety of the Earth's surface. Deserts and tropical jungles have turned into icy wastelands. More than half of the wildlife went extinct, and trees are as rare as a four-leaf clover, which means oxygen levels have dropped significantly. Most of the population, or what's remaining of it, live with oxygen tanks, with scientists still trying to crack the case of the rings. Exactly what the professor predicted. But up in the sky, rocks seem to be falling down and crashing all over. It starts off far away, but then the rocks begin to fall down close by. You and everyone else run back into the mall, which has been covered with a layer of metal to keep the warmth inside. It should be pretty safe in there. If the rocks are falling down, that means the rings are dissipating. Suddenly, you're full of hope that the Ice Age might be over soon. You take a giant straw and begin to inflate Saturn. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's enough. Now let's add some giant rings. That's it. This is Super Saturn, also called Saturn on steroids. It's a real object that scientists discovered in 2012, a planet named J1407b. And astronomers are still not sure what it really is. It could be a gas giant, like Jupiter or Saturn, in our solar system. Then there would be no solid surface there. And if you wanted to set foot on that planet, you just fall through it, all the way to the core. But it could also be a brown dwarf. That's something between a large planet and a full-fledged star. Such objects have to be heavy enough to start thermonuclear reactions, like those going on inside stars. But the power of these reactions is too weak for brown dwarfs to glow and emit heat. To imagine the size and weight of J1407b, let's look at our Earth. If you put our planet on a scale, it'll show 6 and another 21 zeros tons. Our planet is also about 7,900 miles across. Now, that's Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Its diameter is 11 times as great as that of Earth. It's also 318 times heavier. If Jupiter were a bucket, you could put 1,321 Earths in it. And this is the hero of the day, Super Saturn. It's almost 20 times as large as Jupiter. To balance the scales, you need to put 6,360 Earths on the other side. The planet's rings are so wide that if they were in the solar system, they would take up more than half the space between the Sun and Earth. And if Super Saturn switched places with the original Saturn, you'd see those rings with the unaided eye. They would be larger than a full moon. Presumably, these rings appeared in the same way as the ones around our Saturn. One theory says they're the remains of a moon that was once there. Its orbit was unstable, and over time, the moon got torn apart by the tidal forces of the huge planet it orbited. Small pieces of the former moon took their places in the giant's orbit. They collided with one another, like in a blender. After some time, everything that was left was basically particles of dust and ice moving around the colossal planet. Another theory suggests that the rings appeared after the moon collided with an asteroid or another moon. Then the gravitational blender did its job and turned the moon's debris into the rings. Some scientists think the rings formed at around the same time as the planet itself. So they're just the remains of the planetary nebula, which is a cloud of gas, space debris, and dust. Later, it probably shrunk and solidified to form a planet. We can only guess where Super Saturn got its rings from, but scientists say their mass is 80% of that of Earth. It may mean that the moon that used to orbit J1407b was about the same size as our planet. There's a little gap in the middle of these rings, 
scientists think Super Saturn's moon might be there. If this is the case, it should be about the size of Mars. If scientists are right and Super Saturn is actually a brown dwarf, then this is an incredible discovery. Scientists will be able to watch it age. Supposedly, brown dwarfs lose their energy and shrink, fading in the process. And when a brown dwarf exhausts all its energy, it turns into a black dwarf. It's easy to confuse it with a black hole. People haven't discovered black dwarfs anywhere in the universe yet because they take trillions and quadrillions of years to form. Our universe is too young, and none of the stars, even those that appeared when the universe was born, have had time to become black dwarfs. One of the oldest objects in the universe is the white dwarf, with a pretty long name, WD-0346-246. It's about 11 to 12 billion years old, and half as cold as our sun, and it's still cooling. It would need around 10 plus another 15 zeros years to turn into a black dwarf. For comparison, the universe is 1.4 and 10 zeros years old. Scientists believe that a black dwarf will exist for about 10 plus 25 zeros years, feeding on dark matter. After that, its protons, the smallest particles of matter, will begin to decay. And then the black dwarf will simply evaporate. That will take another 10 plus 49 zeros years. But if the protons remain intact, a much more interesting scenario will await the black dwarf. In another 10 and 1500 zeros years, the black dwarf will become an iron star. It's essentially just a cannonball in space. The iron sphere will exist billions of times longer than our entire universe has existed, until it suddenly turns into a black hole. So, the process of the formation of a black dwarf is extremely long. It'd take a regular star an insane amount of time to age that much. But Super Saturn, if it is a brown dwarf, may be much closer to this state. Saturn on steroids is not the only strange planet in our universe. This is Gliese 436b. It's been detected using the transit method. A transit happens when a planet moves between its host star and an observer. It looks similar to a lunar eclipse. This planet is four times the size of Earth and 22 times as heavy. That's almost like Neptune. It's an exotic water world. The water there is solid, but it's not ice. It has a temperature of about 520 degrees Fahrenheit. The water in your pot turns into steam at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But on Gliese 436b, the liquid remains solid because of the extreme pressure on the planet. Scientists have also discovered that the planet's atmosphere is evaporating into outer space. That's why there's a giant circular cloud around it. It's constantly moving in its orbit, giving the planet a long tail that looks like that of a comet. Cancri E holds incredible riches worth more than all the money on Earth. There are diamonds scattered all over the planet. Cancri E is about twice as wide and eight times as heavy as Earth. This planet doesn't rotate. Only one of its sides always faces its host star. The surface temperature there is almost twice as high as the temperature of a burning fire. And since the host star is rich in carbon, the planet contains plenty of this element too. The intense pressure and temperatures help turn carbon into graphite and diamonds. Unfortunately, this planet is 40 light years away from our home. So it'd take about 730,000 years to get there on a regular rocket. Another planet rich in gems is Hat P7b. It's about 1,000 light years away from Earth. It's 60% as large and nearly twice as heavy as Jupiter. The planet is so close to its host star that it makes one revolution around it in just two Earth days. Because of such close proximity to the star, Hat P7b is almost as hot as a white dwarf. If you look at the night side of this planet, you'll see unusual clouds. Scientists believe that these clouds may be rich in corundum material. This is the very substance that forms rubies and sapphires, so it's likely to rain very expensive and beautiful gems there. WASP-12b is one of the darkest planets ever discovered. Only one of its sides faces its host star. The planet's surface is so dark that it eats up about 94% of all visible light, so it looks a lot like a black hole. The host star heats up the planet so much that the material there continuously evaporates. Then the star's strong gravity pulls this cloud toward itself, forming a disk. But TRES-2b is the champion. It's the darkest planet known to people. 
it absorbs 99% of the light coming from its star, which means it consumes more light than a piece of coal. 1% of the remaining light looks red, as it gets reflected by this gas giant. From afar, this planet looks very evil. One of the oldest planets in the universe is PSR B1620 26b. It's about 12.7 billion years old. This means that it formed about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The planet is so old that its two host stars have had time to evolve. One is a white dwarf, the other is a pulsar that makes almost 100 revolutions per second. Sunrises on this planet must be stunning. Right now, this star system is moving toward a dense cluster of stars. This is likely to lead to a stellar collision, so the fate of this planet is unknown. Kepler 438b is one of the most Earth-like planets. It's only 12% larger and is in the habitable zone of its host star, not too close and not too far away. It's a sweet spot where water doesn't evaporate because of the heat and doesn't turn into ice because of the cold. This planet might host life on its surface. In the future, it may also become a new home for humanity, but it would take people about 470 years to get to this planet, even if we traveled at the speed of light, which is impossible due to the laws of physics.